Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode <coughs> Excuse me, of the High Level Release Radar, where we <laughs> recap all the new releases from the week. Coming to you live from Tampa today, down here at POD Live, all of our friends in the POD Live community. Ryan, holding it down uh, for us back at the fort, so to speak. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Soak in all that humidity. Um, we'll do a body get. That's right. Keeps the pores, uh, you know, looking good. Um, we were just chatting beforehand and I was like, oh, probably another light week, right? As we head into level up and Ryan said, oh no, this is actually a pretty hard hitting week with releases. Uh, so I'm excited to jump in. Let me just send us live into the community and we can hop into this week's releases. As always, if you can see us and you can hear us, please let us know by saying hi in the comments. Um, okay, we're sharing to a group, official community, paste, post. All right, we should be live. And let me open up our chat so that we can see those comments as they roll in. Always good to see your names and your faces pop up in the comments. Um, all right, Ryan, let us bring up the deck here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There we go. And hop into the first release of the week, which is email campaigns you can now pause and cancel for schedule campaigns which is awesome a very useful feature i would say yeah this is kind of a big one uh i can't tell you how many campaigns i've started and been like oops mm -hmm. uh we need to correct some copy in this email before the next ten thousand people receive it <laughs> and <laughs> uh so now you can pause uh, the schedule campaigns and uh make your corrections and resume them once again. Um, really nice functionality and flexibility there for those of you who missed something in the editing process. Absolutely, that's a great release. Social Planner got a new post composer, which is looking really nice. We've got a little video here to check out, which I love. Yeah, um, uh, keeps getting I was better and better. I was praising the team on this one because this is such a huge like UI UX improvement from what we had before. And it's just like very delightful to use now. Um, so I, I love all this. There's a lot of different things that are involved here. I didn't catch everything, but the, the basics are you've got a, a whole new kind of look and feel to everything. You can customize, like, let's say, oh, uh, well, on Facebook, I want to do like a reel. And then on Instagram, I just want to do a post. You can make those configurations now per channel. Um, what's coming out and has been mentioned uh, in the future is that you'll be able to then, it will automatically adjust resolutions and, and all the different sizing and stuff that some of the different channels require. Mm. Um, but this is a huge step forward for a social planner. Uh, also all of the uh, error messages and things like that are much easier to understand like what, like why a post failed to post. So you can take action on that. They're gonna be improving that even more uh, with sort of like links to go correct the issue that that was involved there. And all in all, just a super smooth, nice update to the social planner. Um, and and the big one that I think, uh, you know, so many people have been waiting for it, you can now use the same vertical video for a reel and a TikTok in, in the same shot. Like in it, yeah. before you had to schedule them separately and now you can schedule them together, which is obviously a huge time saver. So I know I saw a lot of people really excited about that one. Fantastic job by the social team, as always. Um, oh, this is another huge one. So now estimates are live. So we've got documents, estimates, invoices now. What's the difference, Ryan? Uh, good question. It depends on your application. I mean, it, for all intents and purposes, they're kind of the same. Um, but the estimates function is a nice, clean, like clear path to hey, we're, we're going to do this job. Here's the estimate on it. And then get approval for that estimate. And then you can have a more formalized um, sort of like contract or agreement in place after that fact, or if you want to do invoicing after that. It, it's really adding, again, just much more flexibility to like how jobs are being processed. This would be particularly applicable to like service, you know, home services companies, um, and, and getting was, them kind of started with the, the whole process of a particular job. Yeah, that, that crystallizes for me because I, I said that in jest because I, that was a question that I asked for the team. Like, wait, what is the difference between an invoice or sorry, an estimate and a proposal? And, uh, and the best answer I got back was like, look, a, a plumber doesn't need a three page super visual document to, to send an estimate out. They just literally need 
you know, essentially an invoice that's just the estimate. So now we have those, you can auto convert them into invoices. Um, and, and now the, the I, I would say the payment stack is complete. Um, we've got all the tools that you need to be sending documents, proposals, estimates, invoicing. Um, it's all there. So if you haven't checked it out, I would definitely advise you to do so. You could probably drop some software that you're probably paying for um, now that, that the estimates are there. Yep. And then this is the screen that when, when it's sent to the, to the client, then this is the screen where they can either reject it. They can give a reason why they rejected it um, or accept it. And then you can kind of move forward through the process. Nice. Beautiful. Yep. Uh, phone system got an update. We have more information in call transcripts and we have new call setting default. Yeah. So as you can see, there's just much more clarity over what went wrong, why it went wrong. This is obviously a theme within the entire system that we're trying to give more visibility into what's happening. Mm -hmm. And then on the next screen, um, you'll see under user permissions under our new like granular permissions, you'll now be able to select uh, where you want to receive the calls. So they'll, they'll route it either to your phone or to the, the app if you're in the app. Um, pretty pretty cool little update there because I know mm. that uh, having your phone ring in a million places is not always fun. So mm. Nice. Love it. Uh, um, Chat widget got an update with the WhatsApp theme. This is nice. We can now change the image to be the WhatsApp uh, icon, which I think is actually a big deal. And, mm -hmm. uh, and it defaults to like the WhatsApp coloring and everything, which I think makes a total, a ton of sense there. Yeah. Oh, Not Lecker. That, but... Happy Friday to you. Always nice to see a little shout out there. Again, <laughs> let us know from where you're watching. It's always lovely. Um, so the WhatsApp widget, WhatsApp has been growing uh, like wildfire and super excited to see that continue to grow. We've got some really awesome updates coming for WhatsApp, probably one in a couple of slides, I would imagine. Um, but the next one we have here is remove all tags when we're using the remove contact tag action. Another little quality of life update, I would say, yep. Yep, that way you don't have to remember which ones you had added. You can just re remove them all if that's something you wanna do in that particular workflow. Nice little handy little option there in certain circumstances. Um, membership's got an update. Audio files in courses. Oh, I didn't even see this one. Audio files are now in courses plus V2 offers migration and more. Yeah. So there's kind of a lot going on in this update too. One is the audio files. Um, I'm not bothered because I didn't center the screenshot, but at any rate, uh, it kind of looks like a podcast. It's really cool. Um, the editing functionality is all there too, where you can add it. It's at the very top of the of the lesson, just like a video would be. You can kind of just switch it to audio mode. And then on the next screen, you'll uh, just show. I was actually surprised at how many people asked for this. Um, just audio player only yeah. in a course, but pretty cool. Now it's there. Exactly. Um, and then the next, so V2 offers are kind of like the next iteration of offers. And it unlocks a lot of different things like better compatibility with the Collab app, uh, coupon support, just a lot of really nice features that a lot of people are going to want. And now there's a new like migration flow to get into that. And it kind of explains like why it's better and, and what happens when you upgrade hmm. to it. Um, shouldn't affect you whatsoever, but uh, it, we don't like to just push a bunch of things on folks, have them opt in and see what's going on. And also uh, allow, them, allow them to see what they can do uh, with the new stuff. Um, so it's Okay, so it looks like if we're in an offer, we got this new banner up here. And yeah, is that exactly. the way that so we launch this? Okay, cool. Yeah, so if you're on V1, it will prompt you like, hey, you might want to upgrade to V2, similar to how uh, funnels and websites kind of worked probably two or three years ago now um, in terms of upgrading. Nice. Um, oh, man, a big one. Like you said, I'm surprised that this one didn't get held for level up. Uh, countdown timers went live, or I should say countdown timers sort of V2, right? Because we had the countdown element in the builder, but um, it paled in comparison to the functionality of this new update. Yes. Um, this is sort of, I think about this as a global dynamic timer that can be added to emails that will then mirror what's in the email and what's on the web page so that you can have a true, uh, you know, non-fake timer. <laughs> and there's a lot of cool tricks that the team employed uh, behind the scenes to make this work. Uh, particularly in emails. I mean, as you know, emails are really hard to work in uh, for dynamic content. 
Um, so really cool stuff here. Uh, for those of you that are irritated by the check marks, uh, don't worry. Chase is already <laughs> being the team on that. The uh, transparent check marks will go away in the background there. It'll look way better in probably a day or two. <laughs> yes, minor detail, but major update. Like you said, we yeah. can now basically create a timer that persists from an email to the page. And when it expires, you can control where they should be redirected to um, and these types of things. So really big update, um, some more stuff coming to it. But this basically takes the timer out of the email and funnel builder and into the marketing tab. So it's like a standalone thing. You can go create a countdown timer and then you can use that timer in emails, the page builders, e-com sites, uh, maybe somewhere else that I'm not thinking of as well. But um, yeah. pretty massive update. Exactly. And then this this next screen just shows a screenshot of what it looks like in the email builder. Uh, I didn't get around to making a gift for that one. But anyway, that's that was lazy, uh, lazy, I Ryan. Uh, must be fair. There, All right. There's some tech issues, but uh, we won't get into that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the next one, though, um, looks like we've got custom value picker for marketplace. Um, so bringing the custom values slash merge fields kind of in into the fold. The neat thing here is that you can, when you're selecting a date, you can kind of toggle between like, oh, do you just want a drop down or do you want this to be based on a custom value, mm -hmm. uh, which is really cool. Um, so for all those folks uh, working in the app marketplace, um, awesome, awesome actions within the uh, workflows here. Absolutely. App marketplace continues to pick up steam. Uh, if you are a developer and engineer, you know, definitely head to developers.gohighlevel.com. You can see all the docs that you would need to build apps into high level, um, all sorts of granularity. Permissions have rolled out. The pricing structures are, you know, you've got a ton of optionality there. And very soon you're going to be able to build into the website and funnel builder, sort of like WordPress plugin style, which I am very excited to see what uh, the community starts building over there. Next up, we've got, oh, this is so awesome. So <laughs> WhatsApp now has voice notes in the high level and lead connector mobile app very yes. awesome so you'll have to update a uh, key key point there go into your app store and uh, refresh your updates if you haven't done that and now you've i think most people kind of use the the voice notes on on the mobile device so now you've got this super nice big chunky record button uh it looks super cool there's even waveforms you know i mean mm -hmm. What's not mm -hmm. to like? Yep, looks great. This has been a big one um, that folks have been waiting for. Now it's live in WhatsApp and they're just knocking down the features over there. Some really st cool stuff coming for WhatsApp, like uh, WhatsApp flows, if you know what they are, you're gonna see those live in the platform soon as well. Um, next up, we now have a setup fee for recurring invoices, just more and more granularity around payments in the system. Yeah. Um, a lot of times you're going to want to have some kind of setup fee in there. So now you can do it in the mobile app. Super cool for the, for those invoices, uh, for the Eagle eyes out there. Uh, this is a dev account. You can't actually invoice everyone every minute. Um, that was, <laughs> <laughs> I saw that and I'm like, Whoa, <laughs> Oh, that's not an option. So it's not, uh, this is just uh, some backend that we're looking at. Nice. Yep. Great update there. Uh, and, yeah, let's do the dance. We, we need, need to do a little dance at this time of the year. Um, again, our big summit is happening in less than a month, right? So we're less than a yeah. month away from the high level summit. It's going to be in Dallas and there aren't very many tickets left. So if you want to come summit.gohighlevel.com, hurry up and grab them. Absolutely. So as such, uh, we have a limited pool of things we can talk about. Uh, hence the dancing around. And this is one that has been mentioned before, but I figured with the iOS 18 launch this week, I think it was this week, it's been a long one. Mm -hmm. um, now you've got uh, RCS native within iOS, and we're going to be one of the first options and, and platforms to be able to enable that within the platform itself too. So these are just, this is a screenshot from my phone, uh, you know, the one Android user that I have as a friend. Um, that RCS <laughs> is live indeed, it is working. Uh, and then the next two screenshots are some cool stuff that we'll be able to do within the mobile app um, and conversations, of course, um, for RCS messaging to our lovely fellow Android users. Yeah, this is super exciting. Um, if you don't know what RCS is, give it a quick Google, but basically it's like text messaging 
on steroids, more so like internet based messaging apps like Messenger and WhatsApp, you know, we can now do like mini chat style buttons in there, um, rich media, carousels of images, really cool stuff like that. And yep. so um, that's coming along. You're going to see that roll out very soon. It's not live yet, but um, Apple did just announce it officially. And I think it's iOS 18 is in public beta right now, right? And no, it, it's it's live. It's it's out to the masses now. Oh, sweet. Cool. Yeah. So we'll be right behind. So keep stay tuned for RCS capability inside of high level. And what else does Ryan have for us today? Coming soon, customize and reorder marketing audit report. Oh, this one is near and dear to my heart. Very excited for this one. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's tons of stuff that's in the audit report, but as you can imagine, you might just want to hone in on a couple of things or maybe rearrange the way that it looks. Uh, to kind of fit how you would go through, uh, you know, like a sales pitch or a sales conversation with a potential client. So when you're using the, if you're not aware, there's a prospecting tool in the agency level uh, of high level. And in that you can put in a business information, generate this marketing report, it looks at all kinds of things like the speed of their website, um, their socials, how quickly they review to things. And it generates this lovely looking report. But if you don't like the way it looks or you want to exclude certain things, you'll be able to do that in the near future. Yep. Makes all the sense in the world. If you don't offer SEO, you're not going to send out a report to prospects that has an SEO breakdown because then they're going to say fix it. And you are like, I don't know how, <laughs> what do I do now? So this makes a ton of sense. Um, I, I want to call out before we go today the 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 sort of renaissance of the soul i've had recently around reputation management and this prospecting tool um you know reputation wasn't the the foot in the door strategy that i have used in the past so i've always kind of downplayed it um but we've been running we we did a whole um reputation playbook that we rolled out last month we've been running a five-day challenge around it and it has just really opened my eyes and sort of refreshed the fact that it is such an easy way in to a prospect, right? When you go to the prospecting tool and you run a report for plumbers near me or whatever it is, and you just see all these businesses and how many reviews they have. And there's always some that just have way less reviews than their competitors. And so when you reach out, and again, the five-day uh, challenge that we run gives you the templates to use and everything. But you reach out and you just say, hey, you know, do you know that your, your ratings pale in comparison to your competitors? Does that accurately reflect your business? And so the results that we see of people going through the challenge, just getting people, you know, um, I was just looking at these screenshot testimonials the other day. It's people just replying like, yes, help me. How, you know, how do I fix it? It's just such an easy way to go and help a local business and get your foot in the door. And so uh, I'm loving it. It's my new favorite, you know, tactic. And the prospecting tool just makes it super, super easy. The tool's getting more and more advanced. And I think it's just going to help a lot of businesses generate more uh, prospects and leads. So yeah. if you haven't checked it out, <clears throat> definitely do. It's well, worth your time. To your point, I mean, reputation management is mostly blocking and tackling. And we're not talking about super complicated things you have to do. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you're replying to people, like that helps. If you're getting more Which reviews, we can automate now in high level. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's basically no excuse for, for any business. Uh, and the easy button is just plug them into high level, get a couple of those best practices in line from the five-day challenge. And like you've got a, a very happy customer on your hands. Absolutely. So Ryan, was that the last slide? I don't it have my was. preview today. Yes. Okay, cool. I figured so. So we can go ahead and wrap up. But before we do, again, our big event is less than a month away. I think there are only a handful of tickets left at this point. Um, so if you do want to come, uh, summit.gohighlevel.com, get your tickets, lock in, uh, because we've got the final countdown now. I think there was yep. only like five VIP tickets left last time I looked. Uh, so we'd hate to see you miss out. Um, but if you do miss out, hopefully we see you next year. It's going to be the event of the year as always. And uh, we can't wait to see you there. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. All the teams got their tickets booked. Uh, airline, airfare and uh, hotels are locked in. So can't wait to see you guys there. And um, if not, stay tuned. You know, you never know. There might be another opportunity. That's right. And uh, we'll see you again next Friday. Have a